Hey there, all my friends. How you doing? It is Monday, and I thought it would be a good day for another paint-along, yes? And today, I'm thinking we should do some funky little watercolor doodle trees, yes? So, for these, we're going to use basically the same supplies we did last time. I have a piece of watercolor paper. This one is Strathmore paper. Um, and this one's six by nine because I just cut a, a nine by 12 sheet in half. So anything in the vicinity of that size generally works fairly well for this. Bigger is, bigger is good too. Smaller gets a little bit difficult. Um, I'm using the same brush I used on the last one, which is a number eight round. And you can see it's not wet. So my, my tip is kind of flared out when that gets wet. It'll be a nice sharp chisel point. Um, so something in this size, again, I mentioned last time in the last video that the sizes aren't consistent across brands, but something that's just kind of a, a middle-sized round brush. Um, this one is going to be kind of on the fly, like the flowers were last time. We're not really going to plan this one out, but we're going to do probably four or five different just random looking trees and then we're going to go in and add some doodles to them. So we're going to make these whimsical which means they can be any color that you would like them to be. So I am just going to start with some pink watercolor as I really like um, this particular vibrant pink color. And I'm just going to come in here and do kind of a, a U shape. There's really no rhyme or reason to this shape. <clears throat> and then I'm also going to put a couple of little circles right down here under it. And then I've got my brush wet, so I've got that nice chisel point. I'm just gonna drag that down like a stem. I'm not gonna go all the way to the bottom of the page. I'm also going to make a little stem coming in from each of those little circles. And I'm not going all the way to the bottom of the page, and I'll show you why here when we get done. We're going to do something fun along the bottom of there. And I'm going to go get another color. I think I would like, what would I like? I would like maybe a light blue. As you're doing this, you can choose whatever colors you want for your trees. There really is no rhyme or reason to it. So I'm going to put a little bit of a, a light blue circle here and a little bigger one below it. I'm really not worried about these being terribly symmetrical and even because we're going to make them whimsical. So I'm just starting with a smaller circle, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger. Think like, um, think like snowman, head, middle, bottom with each one a little bit bigger as they go down. And then I'm gonna go get maybe an orange. Let's see, where's my orange? And with my orange, I'm gonna come over here and put a square tree. Oops, I forgot to put my stem on that one, didn't I? We'll go back and get that in a second. So with my orange, I've got a bit of a squarish tree, and then let's put the stem on that one too. And we're just going to take them all down to about the same point, fairly close to the same point, not quite to the edge of the page. Let me go back to my blue and get my, get my stem on over here. Okay. And then I think I'm going to do, oh, you know what? I have this beautiful purple metallic from Artistic Isle. It's called Wolfsbane Purple. And it's just spectacular. And I'm going to do kind of an ovally looking thing here. So while there is no rhyme or reason to this, I am at least trying to vary the sizes of my trees, just so you've got a little bit of visual interest. So this wolf's bane, 
is going to give us kind of a shiny tree when it dries. <clears throat> and then just for the fun of it, we'll put an actual green tree on the sheet. See, I always forget to put my stems. There's my stem. So just for the fun of it, we're going to put a green tree in the middle. And I'm going to make this one kind of triangly shaped. Kind of a little fat squatty tree. And we're going to give him a stem. Okay, so... <clears throat> With each of these stems, I'm going to run back into each of these colors real quick and just make sure I have some wet paint right here at the bottom of the stem. So I'm just dropping in a little bit of wet paint right at the bottom of the stem for each of the colors that I used. And the reason why we're doing that, I'm going to turn this sideways a little bit just so I have a better angle to do it. I rinse my brush out and get it wet so there's quite a bit of water on my brush. And then I'm just going to run right across the bottom here, leaving a trail of water because where I have that wet paint is going to pull it down and give me kind of a ground, the appearance of some ground under it. Now, if your paint wasn't wet enough, like my purple, I didn't have quite enough there, you can just go back in, and same with the green, go back in and add a little, another little dot of wet paint right there at that water line that you made. And then just add a little more water to it and just kind of fan it out a little bit. So we just created a little bit of a, a look of some ground there. We've got different shapes, different size trees. Now with this, I'm gonna pause my video for a second. You guys do the same thing. Go hit this with your blow dryer real quick so that all that paint dries, okay? So I'm gonna pause this for a second and I'll be right back. Okay, hopefully we are all back. I took this in, hit it with the blow dryer for a couple minutes. That let everything get good and dry because if, if your paint's not dry, um, the pen that we use to do the doodling is not going to stick to any of this. It'll smear all over the place and you'll ruin the tip of your pen. So um, everything is good and dry, nice and warm because it's been under the blow dryer. So now we're going to doodle on top of these just to give them some character. And this is the spot I find um, in classes that people often struggle the most because ultimately, what what are you going to doodle? What are you going to draw? And it's really easy to get into to kind of this loop of, I don't know what to draw. What do I draw? I don't know what to draw. What do I draw? So for, for the sake of, of doing something like this with doodles, think of just basic shapes and maybe how you want to outline the trees and things like that. So for instance, with the flowers the other day, we did kind of a really rough outline around them. Um, let me grab this real quick. You can see on these, the outline's just real rough. It doesn't follow the shape exactly. So maybe you want to start with something like that. I'm going to do that kind of on my, my blue tree. I'm just going to outline it, but I'm not going to do it very exactly. I'm going to let the pen wander a little bit. And I'm going to put a little line down one side of my stem just to give it a little bit of definition. So now that I've got this tree, I'm just going to start adding things to it. So initially, I'm just going to add some circles, basic shapes. And I'm just going to do it randomly. So I have this weird little polka dot tree thing going on. Vary the size of your dots as well, so they can be all different sizes. And then maybe I'm just going to add a couple little lines here and there just to maybe make it look like a weird little polka dot of blue cactus. Yeah. And then at the bottom, I'm going to add some leaves off the trunk of my tree. 
Leaves don't always grow right off the trunk, but it's just interesting. It's whimsical, so it doesn't have to be anything botanically correct. So what I end up with is something like that. And I'm realizing now that I'm holding this up close, this camera doesn't focus very well, does it? Hopefully you can see this well enough to see what we're doing. Um, I'm gonna do kind of the same thing on my little pink guy over here start outlining him, but then I'm going to give it some shoots coming out the top. And I'm going to put dots on the end of those shoots coming off the top. Again, we're just going basic shapes, basic lines. I want to anchor those little shoots on something. So I'm going to put little squares at the bottom. Does that make any sense where a tree is concerned? Absolutely not. But these are whimsical trees, so it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to add some wavy lines into my tree and to continue the square motif, just so this tree has a little bit of a consistent look. Everything's similar on this tree. I'm going to put my little squares on those wavy lines. And I'm going to go down here to these guys and outline them just like we did the flowers the other day. I'm going to go around them a couple of times, but I'm not really adhering tightly to the shape and I'm just going to add lines down one side of my stems. So again, we're defining it and I might put a few more leaves off the stems of this tree, right? And you can see the more you add to this, the more whimsical it gets and the cuter it gets. And we're really not doing anything complicated as far as drawing is concerned, just basic shapes, basic lines. So I'm going to come over to my little green tree here. And this one's got a little bit of a swoop going down here at the bottom. And I kind of want to take advantage of that swoop. So I'm going to give it a little bit of an outline. But when I get to this corner down here, I'm going to swirl it in on itself. And I'm going to outline it on this side as well. And I'm going to give it just a couple curly lines down there and maybe a couple more lines up here up top. So what I'm showing you is just examples that are coming to the top of my mind. You can certainly use any kind of shapes, any kind of lines that you want. I'm just hopefully trying to give you the idea that um, doodling doesn't have to be complicated. Start with really simple shapes, really simple lines, and then just keep adding things to it. I'm gonna add a few leaves off this little swirly line and the more you add to it, it just, it all kind of comes together with this cohesive look as you're doing it. Almost magically. Um, with my big tall tree, I'm going to kind of outline this one like we did the flowers the other day as well. I'm going to go over it a couple of times, but I'm not adhering to the shape very well and letting it kind of wander outside a little bit. And this one I want to have maybe more of a tree look. So I'm going to put a line right up the middle and I'm going to put leaves on it. And I'm just drawing little lines off the main line thinking like a stem going up the middle of it. But that's maybe a little too tree-like. If we're doing whimsical, we need to give it, we need to give it something funky. So let's just do some little swirly guys sticking out of it. Right? And maybe we're gonna put a few dots around the outside. I'm kind of a fan of dots. I, for me, that for some reason, that just really kind of takes the whole doodle whimsical look to where I like it to go. You can see I start adding those dots all the way around some of my other shapes as well. And I'm going to put a few in these little circle guys down here. And then I've got one more tree to do. Now this one is my square tree. And I think I kind of like the idea of a juxtaposition of squares and round shapes. So again, I'm going to outline it just a little bit, 
kind of a wonky outline. Run down the stem. But this time I'm going to put little swirls all over it. Run them off of it here and there so that it looks like they're sticking out. Just because that's fun. And there we go. I'm going to put some dots at the center of each of those just to set them off a little bit and then maybe some little lines here and there. And I'm going to finish the stem off with a couple of leaves for each of them. So, so far, you can see where we're going with this. It's a little hard to see the pen on the purple tree because that paint is metallic. You could kind of see when I get it in the light just right, it shines a little bit. So that's why it's a little harder to see the black on the purple. That metallic shine gives the camera a little bit of grief. So there I've basically got my trees. But if you want to continue embellishing it from there, just to, to continue giving it some personality, um, I, if it's me, I'm going to come in and put like a little line kind of across the top of my ground here. Again, it doesn't have to adhere strictly to where the line of that paint goes, just generally. If it, if it comes up off of it here and there, that's perfectly fine. And I'm going to add some little grass to it. And the way I'm doing the grass is just two or three, four little lines together of different sizes. Put some of them right close to the tree, put some of them a little further from the trees, make them go different directions. Give you some grass along the bottom. If you want to put some dots at the top of those grasses, just to give them a little more whimsy, you know, kind of the idea in, in doodling something like this is the more the more you add to it, the better it gets. Now, there's obviously um, a point where you hit too much, but where is that point? It, it's strictly what your eye likes. I like really busy doodles, and I'm not sure why that is. I just do. So I just keep adding it until my eye's happy with it. Now, in addition to the little grasses down here, you can add like a little swirly and a little swirly. What are those? I don't know. They're just doodles. Maybe it's curly grass. And I'm going to put a couple leaves on those just for giggles and a couple of dots here and there so you can add some more of those all around if you want to. Maybe it becomes like a little vine growing up. And you can see as you start to fill this in, that whimsical look just kind of comes together all by itself. The more doodles you add to it, the more whimsical it gets. So I'm liking what's going on down here, but I'm feeling like I need something up top. There's nothing up there. So I'm going to put a little bit of a sun and a few birds. Because we're doing whimsical, and we're not necessarily adhering to what things really look like in real life, my birds are gonna be real easy. They're just little V-shapes. And just put a few of them here and there. Visually, um, odd numbers generally look better than even numbers, so like three or five instead of two or four. And then I've got kind of a big space right here and right here, so one of those two I'm gonna put a sun in there. I think I'm gonna put it right here. But I don't necessarily want it to be, um, you know, a realistic looking sun. So I'm just going to do a big curly Q like that. My little big dot in the middle. And then I'm going to make little rays coming off of it. So this is going to be my sun. And I'm going to do those rays all the way into the center. So there I have a sun. Now from here, you can obviously continue doodling. I'm going to add a few more dots. Um, I think I want a little curly cue off the top of that tree. And maybe a few more things sticking out of these guys. Some dots on this one. So you just kind of continue on until 
it looks pleasing to your eye until you think you've got enough stuff on there and then you're done. So we end up with something that looks like this and we've done this in what, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. So it's not something terribly complicated because you're using basic shapes, basic lines for your doodles. You can do it fairly quickly and you don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about what am I going to draw? What am I going to doodle? What do I want to put on this? Um, if, if you do hit a point where you're not sure what you want your doodles to be, you can always Google basic doodling or look that up on Pinterest and you'll see tons of stuff um, that are just really basic shapes and lines that you can use for doodles and kind of use that as an inspiration database to draw from. Um, so there we go, some whimsical trees. As always, you're making a piece of art. So sign it when you're done. I like to put dates on mine so I know when I did it. And there we go. So there's a paint along for you. I'm going to try and do one of these each week going forward for a little while here. I will put them on my Instagram TV and on my Facebook and on my YouTube channel. And there are links to all of those um, in my bio and on my website. So there you go. If you do paint your whimsical trees, I would love to see what you do. So feel free to post them and tag me or to message them to me if you don't want to post them publicly. But I would love, 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 love to see what you create. There you go, my friends. Happy painting whimsical trees.